Jesus suffered for you and for me. He suffered for my hood and for your hood. He cried while praying in the garden. He was whipped to the bone and placed with a thorn crown on his head. He carried his own cross and then was crucified on it. With his tongue sticking to the roof of his mouth on a mission to complete the vision, Jesus said, I thirst. What discomforts are you willing to go through to get to what God has for your life? With every passing wind, feeling like a thousand needles piercing his body, Jesus had a physical need that needed to be met. Jesus didn't have a drink for more than 24 hours. Wow, he was thirsty. Has anyone out there been thirsty? I have. And the only way to quench that thirst is to put the right things in your body. The same thing goes for the spirit. We have to be careful what we are feeding ourselves. I tried to quench my thirst with friends, sex, money, titles, but none of that really worked out. The only thing that could really truly do that was Jesus. Jesus has come to quench our thirst. Thank you, Lord, for quenching my thirst. Experts say that desire for water to satisfy thirst is so basic to human survival that individuals have responded both inappropriately and violently to such a degree that all sense of rationality and all sense of rationality stops and survival becomes the all-encompassing thought. When Jesus said, I thirst, there is no question that this was a gross understatement. The Bible carefully details the great loss of fluids that Jesus experienced on the eve of his transition from earth to glory. The sweat, as it were, great drops of blood that fell from his brow during the agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. The pain-induced sweat from the crown of thorns that were mockingly pressed into his brow. The bearing of his own cross, his being struck stripped of his own garments, the sweat and the water build up on the outside of his lungs from the brutal scourging and the fluid build up on the inside of his lungs and swelling of his body caused by his hanging on the cross, all exacerbated his need for water, not to mention the nails that were driven through the tops of his feet. His knees now positioned at a 90 degree angle because of the nail in his feet causes the weight of his body to press downward on the nail. The iron nail, like a red hot metal rod pressing against his plantar nerve was like a brutal, burning, unrelenting pain, aggravated aggravated by the slightest of movements. A pain that was so intense that even a draft of air or the sun rays from the sky or even the movement of his body would cause torturous pain. And take and let and let's take this physiology lesson a little bit further. For, for him to inhale, Jesus' diaphragm has to move downward in order to move air into his lungs. For Jesus to exhale, the diaphragm has to raise upward in order to force air out from his lungs. The weight of Jesus' body on the cross pulls down on his diaphragm in order to move air into his lungs. But in order for him to speak, to utter one word, he has to painfully push up on the nailed feet so that air can pass over his vocal cords during the process of exhalation. But despite his pain, and this is the point, he intentionally and deliberately and consciously pushes up seven different times to utter seven different sayings, one of which is, I thirst. The Bible says that after this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. I wrestled with these words. How could he say that all things were now accomplished before he ever uttered the words, I thirst? 
I looked a little further. The phrase, we're now accomplished, is in the perfect tense, which suggests an action that was completed in the past and has continuing results. Remember, this is the same God that declared the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that were not yet done. This is the one that was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And as the pre-existing, incarnate, living word of God, Jesus, despite his pain, does everything in his power to demonstrate to us that he is faithful and that his word can be trusted. Even in his agony, he did not allow one word of his word to fail. This shows you and I how dependable the Word of God is. In fact, he said his Word is going out and it will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish what he pleased and prosper in the thing that he sent it out to do. So you and I can depend upon the promises of God for everything that we go through. Take courage, my brother. Take courage, my sister. You are just one more eye thirst away from your victory. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. It was because of the joy that was set before him that Jesus did not quit. So you're too close to quit now. Don't give up now. If you're contemplating suicide because the pain and the loneliness seems unbearable, don't quit. If you're contemplating ending relationships that God has called you to, don't quit. To those of you that want to abort your divine assignment, don't quit. Like Jesus, find the strength to utter the words, I thirst. Thirst for what, Sister Carmen? Thirst for life, thirst for mended relationships, thirst for family, thirst for his presence, thirst for his peace, thirst for his joy, and thirst for every victory that God said is yours.